Can you prosper from parts? Top men. Let's hope so. As two teams of money-obsessed car strippers battle to make maximum profit from breaking end-of-life vehicles. 65 at 250. 1,400 nickel. This isn't mindless nonsense, though. It's a learning experience. There's culture. What's that? A business masterclass. Excuse me, ladies. No, 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 don't run off. Don't run off. <laughs> and an in-depth study of linguistics. I don't speak Polish. I'm struggling with English. challenge the teams must go big with a whopping budget of 10 grand they'll be able to break true motoring thoroughbreds for parts but high purchase prices mean there'll be a lot of cash to claw back just to break even neither team has ever made a loss but get this wrong and all that could change leaving their reputations in tatters if recovering thousands in costs wasn't enough the teams will have only three days at this licensed breakers yard to strip their cars before selling off the parts for hard cash. Whoever rakes in top profit wins. This could be the toughest challenge to date for two teams more at home with Fords than Ferraris. Less Lamborghini, more Lud. First up, Ben and Frankie. Making sparks fly in the workshop is mechanic Ben Shermansky. Creating automotive perfection requires craftsmanship, skill and time. Destroying it, a big hammer usually suffices. Keeping the pound coins rolling in is East End sales shark Frankie Otway. I might look like a teddy bear, but when it comes to selling, I'm like a boy in a china shop. Across the yard, George and Sheldon. The man in charge of cutting up cars is wrench-happy George Percy. I'm not happy unless I'm up to my elbows in engine oil and grease. Taking care of cutting the deals is smooth operator Sheldon Nichols. When you look great and you feel great, you can sell anything. Mission one for the boys is choosing which car to splash their 10 grand budget on. Ben and Frankie have just one thing in mind. Porsche would be quite a good idea. Ben, I'll notice you jump straight into Porsches. I quite fancy a Porsche. But not a Boxster. No, because that's not a real Porsche. That's not a Porsche. No, it's got to be a 911. A 911 if you prefer, Frankie. In 1963, Porsche unleashed the 901 until Peugeot threw a hissy fit about the name, and it became the 911. 50 years of motoring supremacy proves you don't mess with perfection. The unmistakable silhouette has barely changed, and she's still driven by the powerful flat-six engine. Milestone tweaks came in 1998, with the 996 version adopting water cooling and four-valve cylinder heads. But Porsche's flagship car remained as prized as ever. With punters paying a premium for parts, a 911 should be a lucrative investment, if they can get their hands on one. And as luck would have it, Ben knows a man who can. I think I should take the lead, Frankie, because I know a man. And do you know what he does? What? You'll never guess. He sells Porsches. <laughs> he does sell Porsches, yeah. Hello, Kev? Yeah, it's Ben. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, very good, very good. Listen, you'll never guess what I'm in the market for. Believe it or not, this isn't Soviet Russia. It is, in fact, Leeds. Benz brought Frankie to his Yorkshire homeland in the hope a shiny Porsche 911 might prove it's anything but grim up north. Just remember, we don't use Sovereignos up here for money. It's brass, if anything. You'll just confuse the fella. Benz, man with a Porsche, is fellow breaker Kevin Durkin. We're a specialist Porsche breaker. Uh, the cars in the yard that you've seen today are, are all Cat Vs, which have been uh, written off by the insurance companies due to accident damage. Although a 
Cat B means all these cars have been deemed write-offs, they're still good for parts. The lads today have come to see a Porsche 996 uh, Carrera 2 Cabriolet. No need to worry, the 996 is simply a version of the 911. So this is the car the boys are after. Porsches everywhere. There's a Porsche, yeah. There's a Porsche. 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 No, Frankie, that's not a Porsche. That's not a Porsche. That's not a Porsche. No. Well, there's a lot of Porsches. This is a beauty. I've got to tell you, Ben, that's a bit of me. I do like that. I do like it. It's a beautiful car, Frankie, and there's a lot of cash here. This could be an adventurous trip. You see that roof? Have a guess. Go on. I don't know. You're looking at a grand, surely. Yeah, over a grand. 1,300 quid, I reckon. There's all sorts of bits. These wings, 400 quid a piece. These lights, you know, from Porsche? Yeah. 1,200 quid, those lights. So we've got a bit of knock them out for at least 300, haven't we? This is lovely. This is lovely now because now I'm seeing pay notes. I'm seeing our profit develop. Have a look, get in, have a look around. Do you think I should? Yeah, I think you should. Go on. How about taking it for a little spin? A little spin? Yeah. Ah. Now, there is a, there is a tiny little problem with that, Frankie. What's that? There's vital bits missing. How vital? Well, there's no engine and gearbox. Wallop. He's hit me straight between the eyes and said there's no engine and gearbox in it. I mean, that's like buying a, it's like buying an orange with no pips. No engine and gearbox. Well, it had a little shunt on the back and it damaged it all, so they've taken that out and it's not included in the sale, Frankie. But everything else, Frankie, this car will break for a fortune. Well, what sort of man is he looking for for this? He wants maybe five or six for it, Frankie. Now, it's a lovely car. It's been at, it's had a little accident and there's no engine and gearbox. But it's a prestige motor, it's a lovely motor, and there's lots of parts saleable on there. Meanwhile, back at the yard, Sheldon's relishing the chance to splash out. You've got the opportunity to go big on this one. You've got ten grand. Ten grand? It is nice, but it's a challenge, isn't it? We've got to make the money back. Rolls-Royce? Bentley? What about an Aston? We could get an early Aston. What about a Maserati? No one's breaking those. Well, not that I know of. Yeah, you've got the Quattro Porte, and you've got the 3200 twin turbo. Yeah. One yeah. with the boomerang back lights. They're nice. I like your thinking, George. Maserati had been lurking in the shadows of its rivals for some 20 years prior to the company being taken over by Ferrari in 1997. A major boost in credibility came with the release of the 3200 GT. Boasting a 3.2-litre twin-turbo V8, 370 brake horsepower and a top speed of 280 kilometres per hour, Maserati finally had a car to rival the Porsche 911. The 3200 GT helped turn around Maserati's fortunes, and a hefty price tag on parts could do the same for the boys. Hi, I'm ringing about the Maserati. It's sold. All right, mate. It's sold. Oh, she's gone. Hi, I'm ringing about the Maserati. Is there a bit of movement on that money if I come down, see it, and like it? That sounds... Yeah, that sounds fantastic. The mission to secure a Maserati has brought George and Sheldon to a high-end dealership in Chessington. How oh, lovely, isn't they? Oh, oh, oh. Look at that red one. God, he's got a few quid's worth of motors around him, isn't he? Where Italian car specialist Ilya Salaya is primed to strike a deal. We basically specialise in Ferrari, Lamborghini and Maserati. Sheldon and George are coming down to look at a Maserati 3200 GT. The head gaskets have failed. It probably would cost anything between five and six thousand pounds to repair, so it's really uneconomical to repair the car and then try and sell it on. It's the best option, really, to break the car. Well, I'd like £6,000 for the car, but we'll see where we go with the price. Oh, wow. George, we're buying a Maserati. Can you believe it? Oh, look at it. Oh, man. Children. Woo! George, the Maserati. <laughs> you sound like you've already bought this. Do I look good next to it or not? I've got to admit it, I fell in love with it. I've never owned a Maserati. I've never thought of even owning a Maserati, contemplated owning a Maserati. I mean, is she as clean your side as she is mine? It's got a couple of minor marks on the wheel, but that's about it. The tyres are all the same tyres all round. 
It's obviously been kept in a garage because there's no curb marks on any of those wheels. That tells you a lot about a car. It's been well looked after. It's had a lot of love. Go on then, start her up. Uh, well, no, hold on, hold there on. was a few issues with that. Well, the, the coils aren't plugged in. Yeah. It's not even got a spark plug in there. Yeah, gasket's gone on it. Right. But he assures me it hasn't got a cracked head and the block's all good. It's just the head gaskets. Are you sure? Well, yeah. It's got a couple of engine issues, but the bodywork and interior-wise, it's all there. It'd be fun to own the Maserati, wouldn't it? Meanwhile, up in Leeds, Frankie's pulling no punches for the Porsche. So, uh, Kev, yeah. Ben tells me you're looking for a lot of money for that mate with no engine or gearbox. Ten grand, mate. Worth it all day long. Yeah. I'm sorry to tell you, Ben told me six grand. No way, it's worth more than that. I think I might have uh, dropped a bit of a clanger. A big clanger. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to tell you something else, Kev. You ain't going to get ten grand out of us. Never. Never, brother. Not in a million years. Six grand, take it or leave it. Don't start all that rubbing your face, Kev, because it won't wash. You know, we are shrewd people here. We are exactly what you see. You're we having are... a laugh, mate. No, they all say that, Kev, we're having a laugh. <laughs> you don't see me smiling, do you? <laughs> not often, no. No. Six grand's reasonable, Kev, though. It's not bad. It is, Kev. I need more than that, mate. You'll have to try a little bit harder. Come on, come on. Cal, break for a fortune. Ben, will It you... will break for a fortune, Frank. He is right. I'm doing you a favour here. But if we offer you, right, a little bit extra, six and a half grand, you're going to get six and a half grand for that motor. We've got a deal, Kevin. We surely been. Surely. Surely? Go on then. Six and a half grand. Yep. Shake that man's hand, Ben, will you? <laughs> You've done the right thing, Kev. Yep. I'll tell you what, you have done the right thing. One engineless Porsche 911 bought for six and a half grand. It's one of the most acclaimed sports cars in the world. Although its current 0 to 60 time depends on how many people are willing to push. Back in Chessington, Sheldon is straight down to business as he attempts to secure this Maserati 3200 GT, complete with blown head gasket. I've got four and a half thousand pounds. That's pretty low. Five and three quarters, 5,750 pounds. It's got good history. That's all the history there, is it? Yeah, that's right here. So you're saying five, five and three quarters? Five and three quarters. <sighs> I've got a maximum of five grand. And that's, with all respect, I'd have to take it or leave it, because I can't go any more than that. Five grand. It's difficult for me to sell it for that, but, you know, you're a nice enough guy. I think we can, uh, we can do business at £5,000. Lovely. Well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> I own a Maserati. <laughs> so, George and Sheldon have secured this doomed Maserati 3200 GT for five grand. It may have looks to die for, but with a knackered head gasket, it's living proof that beauty is only skin deep. Having bought their high-end motors, the teams now have their work cut out in clawing back the deficit. So, with just three days to play with, they need to get stripping and start selling. What can't be sold will be crushed and weighed in for scrap. But before the teams get to work, there's just time for a butchers of the opposition. Well, it's taking a bit of time, but it's nice to see you guys have finally decided to buy yourself a decent car. It's a lovely motor, Frank, but it's hardly a scrapper. I mean, where'd you nick it from? George, don't start all that game. You're practically calling me a thief. Well, let's have a look at the No, buddy. George, we're no, very busy now. Come on. No, come let's on. Let's we'll have a look. look. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It was all Lee's idea. It was all Lee's idea. I not even got the engine. Got no engine. It was. I knew there had to be something wrong no, with it. No, no, no. Onwards and upwards, that. fellas. Let's uh, take a look at this. <laughs> it's a nice car. Feast your eyes on that beautiful bodywork. That gorgeous leather interior. You like it, don't you, Ben? Hmm. Start her up, then. Let's have a look at it, then. See what it's all about. It doesn't start. Ah, well, no. George, being a Maserati, it'll be something very simple. A fuse, some lack of fuel, a flat battery. It's a head gasket. A head gasket. Oh. George, at a main dealer's, that would cost a billion pounds to fix. Your car, it's worthless. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Ben. Only those two could have bought an engine as bad as ours, and we ain't even got one. George and Sheldon splashed out five grand on this shiny Maserati 3200 GT. Looks can be deceptive, though. A blown head gasket has seriously lowered the value of the engine. And that's a big minus when you've splashed so much cash. 
Ben and Frankie are in petrol head dreamland with this Porsche 911. In reality, the absence of engine and gearbox, a dented rear bumper, a gaffer tape based security system, and a purchase price of six and a half grand mean that dream could turn into a financial nightmare. But that's not to say they should throw in the towel. There's still plenty of money in the 911, with premium sales to be made on roof, body shell, and leather interior. It's the interior that on day one is job one for Ben and Frankie. That moved a bit sharpish, didn't it? Yeah, it's pretty quick, these posh bits, that straight yeah. down. Do you know what I think we should do first? Get all the interior bits and pieces out, because these are in quite nice condition, apart from the mould. But they're worth a lot of cash, and I don't want muddy footprints all over them. I've even put a bit of white carpet down to put these. Well, that's out. what you should be doing, actually, because it is very expensive. We are where we are. We've got a six and a half grand Porsche with no engine and gearbox. We've got a mech for money. But they won't make a penny without alerting the part buying public. Cue the big man. Front seats, I've got back seats. Everything for sale on that motor. You name it, I've got it. Speakers, I've got seat belts, door cards, panels, I've got doors. Frankie's phone bashing isn't in vain, as there may be a sale in the offing. Oh, you want the rear seats? Come down and see me. I'm approachable. How nice. And that's just as well, because here are the punters. Father and son, Bally and Sean. My name's Bally, this is my son Sean, and we're here to buy 911 rear seats. Lovely to meet you, boy. Lovely. I am looking for two and a half hundred nicker for these seats out of the Porsche. And are you going to buy them or not at that money? No chance. Too steep. No chance. Can you elaborate on no chance? I'll give you 125 for them. I think 125 is a cracking deal. 125? You can think what you like, Bally, because you're not going to get them at 125. I am looking to you two today, 195 nicker plus a fiver for lunch. That's 200 nicker to you two from Coventry. How'd you feel? I'll tell you what, I'll give you 150 quid. You are getting a deal of a lifetime, my son. These are so soft, you will never get backache, leg ache, headache, or any other ache, right? So I'm telling you what I'm gonna do with you, Sean, because I like you. 175, how do you feel? I'll tell you what, you got yourself a deal. You, I've got a deal. That's the rear seats and seatbelt clips sold for 175 quid. Breaking even. It's only six thousand three hundred and twenty-five pounds away. See you later. See you later. See you later. <laughs> Meanwhile, George can see pound signs in the non-running Maserati engine. There's a lot of money in just these little bits. That throttle body, six hundred pounds. Yeah. Then can you imagine if second hand? Imagine going into Maseratis and trying to buy it. Even though the head gaskets are gone and that engine doesn't run. It's not the end of the world. We could sell that engine on to someone else that's prepared to rebuild it and overhaul it. We've got all the ancillaries, the starter motor, the alternator, the aircon pump. There's still a lot of money in it. George has a point. But aside from the engine, there's also cash to be made from other desirable parts, such as bodywork, lights, suspension, and brakes. Getting the engine out requires a few other parts to be stripped first. Fortunately, those bits are worth a few bob too, so the boys are killing two birds with one stone. Hello, good afternoon. Um, I've got your number from um, one of the local car magazines. Yeah, and Sheldon wastes no time in trying to flog those parts as they come off. I'm actually at the moment breaking a Maserati 3200 GT twin turbo. Not for you. What, none of it? Hello? Yeah, the grill's still available. Do you want me to put your name on it? Lovely. A phone sale of 150 quid for the front grill is a start, but it's small change when you've got five grand to claw back. Across the yard, something's troubling Frankie. Ben, look. What? I've just been doing some number crunching. And, uh... It ain't looking good, brother. We ain't got time for a lot of this stuff. And if you look at it realistically, and you can't play some quick, then you are left with 
not only parts that you can't sell, but possibly a, a deficit, which means that you are in debt. You know, if we paid three and a half grand for this moment, I wouldn't be worried. We paid double that. I feel that we're going to end up having to take a bit of a whack on this. And that's not a good thing. To tackle the deficit, the boys need sales on high-value items. And there's a lead on the wheels. Hello, Mush. Yeah. What, the allies on the Porsche? Yeah, you like them? All right, yeah, well, come down and we'll have a deal. Yeah, no, as long as you don't strong it, Mush, and all that game. With uprated tyres, a set of four new Porsche wheels can cost as much as £1,700. So the chaps should be good for a few hundred quid, if they're in good nick. What sort of condition are these in, in these tyres? Pucker or what? Well, there's a few things you need to look for if you're buying used tyres, Frankie. I mean, the first thing is the condition of the rubber, because as rubber get, as it ages, it starts cracking, it dries out. The other thing is any significant curbing or gouging in the sidewalls there, you know, if they've hit the curb. But these look pretty decent. They look all right, don't they? They look pretty nice. So the final thing to look at is the tread depth. Now, right. you get one of these devices just to measure it. So you can see you've just got above four millimetres on this tyre. So what should it be? Well, on a new tyre, you'd start off with maybe seven, eight millimetres. And in the UK, tyres become illegal when they get down to 1.6. Right. So this is about halfway done in terms of tread. Halfway. They're still pretty decent. They've got plenty of miles left in them. Yeah, they have, haven't they? With the condition of these wheels, with that sort of logo, the tyres all look good and tasty. Yeah. I mean, we could be talking about a nice few quid here, Ben, couldn't we? I think so. And here's the buyer. Dr. Cal Dazia, who's come to examine the goods. My name's Cal from Manchester. I've come here to buy some wheels for my Porsche Carrera 4, and I'm on a budget. The budget's 500 pounds. Cal, if I said you 700 nicker, yeah. what would you say to me, Cal? Not, not a possibility. Not a possibility. In other words, it means no, doesn't it? It means it can't be done. It can't be done. Yeah. They spin like that, <laughs> right? All that, Cal, and they bounce. Look. True. Right. Because they bounce, Cal, I'm going to do you a deal of a lifetime. Six and a half hundred nickel. To you. I have to say no. Cal, listen. Listen to me. Yeah. Now, meet me halfway, and you can put them in the boot of your motor yeah. and take them up where they have that black pudding and all that <laughs> other dodgy grub, right? Yeah, yeah. Take them home. OK. For five and a half hundred quid. Five and a half hundred quid. Appreciate that. I'm looking at more than 500. You said you'll refuse to pay five and a half. If I took an Urton Senna off of it, a Paul McKenna, a tenner off yeah, of it, yeah. what would you say? We got a deal or what? I think we got a deal. We got a deal? And I have got 540 on me. You got 540? It's all there. It's all there. That's 540 notes for the wheels. It's another notch on the sales belt, but the boys need to be adding zeros if they want to break into profit. Meanwhile, Sheldon's tried to squeeze money out of the knackered Maserati engine. But it's not going to plan. Yeah, the engine's complete. Yeah, it's a twin turbo. No, no, the, the head gasket's on one bank's gone. Cheers. It's the one in the front, isn't it? Yeah, it might drop a little bit. Drop a little bit? No, it's a great engine. I'm prepared to give you a guarantee with it. It's got loads of service history. <sighs> this engine is bad news. I don't want to say I've bitten off more than I can chew, but I think I've bitten off more than I can chew because it's not the easiest thing for me to get rid of. The inquiries that I'm getting, they're all asking if it's a runner, which unfortunately it's not. A lot of people are in the same situation that I'm in okay, with an engine with a blown head gasket. It's not happening fast enough for me, so I think we're going to have to divert our energies and our passions to selling a lot of other bits off of this car for the time being. And those bits need to be stripped before Sheldon can sell them. So George gets to work. I've got a Maserati 3200 GT. It's got the wheels, it's got the interior, the dash. Yep, engine box, diff, front, rear suspension. It's, it's a complete car. No, not silly prices. Whatever you need or want off of it, it's here. Yeah, speaking. No, there's no damage on the bonnet. The bonnet's fine. And after countless efforts, the hard sell looks like it's about to pay off. Because here's car bonnet collector Terry Jeeves. My name's Terry. Um, I'm interested in a Maserati bonnet. Um, it's the first Italian bonnet I've bought, because I collect American bonnets generally. 
um, but I just love the shape of it. Um, so I don't want to pay too much money for it because basically it's a wall hanger. So we'll see. How you doing, Terry? All right, mate. Um, as you can see, it's got no scratches, no dents. It's never been repaired. It's in good nick. Yeah, no, it's good. It's, it's exactly what I want. It's fine. It's no damage. It's great. Just got to sort out what, some money, you know. Okay, well, as you know, it's advertised at 280. It's a bit more than I wanted to pay for it. Can we do 140? <laughs> for a minute, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said 140 for a minute there. I did say 140. No, no. I know you're bigger than me, but you know. 180? Getting close. Tell you what, make it 280. We can shake hands. That's gone back up where we started. Well, that's all good for me, that works. Not for me. <laughs> do 230 and we've got a deal. I can't do it. No such word as can't. There is. 200 quid and I'll shake your hand. <sighs> Go on then. All right. Cheers, mate. Do you want to end putting in your motor? Yeah, if you don't mind. That bonnet sale means 200 notes for George and Sheldon and a lovely wall hanging for Terry. It's petrol head chic. But both teams have got to pull their socks up if they want to start oh, making sorry. profits. Thanks, Thanks very much, mate. Cheers, you mate. take care. Thanks a lot. It's day two out of three as the teams attempt to make top profit from breaking high-end oh, motors. Right. I've got a deal. Things could have gone worse on day one. It's all there. But they could have gone a lot, lot better. George and Sheldon spent five grand on a handsome but non-running Maserati 3200 GT. On day one, they battled to get sales on a bust engine, but ultimately came away with just 150 for the grill, 200 for the bonnet, and a financial mountain to climb. Ben and Frankie paid six and a half grand for their engine-less Porsche 911. And despite having made early sales on rear seats for 175 quid and wheels for 540, they're far from profit. But Frankie's had a call that could make all the difference. Hello, Governor. Yes. I've got a lovely Porsche. It's wonderful. Is there anything I can tempt you with? Yes. You want that? Lovely. What else? Yes. Yes. Yeah, go on. Yeah, lovely. In fact, the punter wants the vast majority of what's left on the 911 including the body shell. But it's not all good news. How far away are you exactly? About 1,100 kilometres, because the buyer is in Szczelona Góra, Poland. Oh. Right. Yeah, no, it's all right. It's all right. I do, I do long trips. Frankie arrive in Poland ahead of their 911 parts, leaving them time to sample the local culture and cuisine. Look, Ben, I think you better order because I don't speak the old lingo. Yeah, leave it to me. Now, with a name like Szymanski and a Polish father, you can see why Frankie's brought Ben along. He needed a translator, and who did he turn to? Me, of course. The little problem, the little flaw in this plan is I don't speak Polish. You've got to be one of those. And, uh, yeah, I think you'll like that. Yeah. You know, what chance I've got? I mean, you know, I've got no chance, have I? I'm struggling with English. Yes. Okay. Yes. I appreciate that, that he interprets it and orders what, exactly what he thinks I'm going to love, which is lovely. You like it, Frankie. It's nice. Good stuff. Is it? You are, yeah. Nice of him. What's that? It's your soup. It's got three colours in it. It's a lovely mix of um, vegetables and, and things, and seeds, and a leaf on top. you like it, I think. Back at base, there's a change of plan for Sheldon. Right, brainwave time. Think out of the box, new strategy. I'm not going to sell that engine as a lump. It's worth more in bits, i.e. the cams, the heads, the block. Selling it as a lump doesn't make sense because the phones aren't ringing. No emails, no texts, no nothing, no interest. I really think that's the way forward, and that's the only way I think I'm going to get my money back. Having devised a new engine strategy, it's up to George to get it stripped and Sheldon to sell the bits. So you just want the bare block and the heads? 
and nothing else. And with a change of tack, a change of luck. What are you thinking of putting that in? No, what sort of car are you thinking of putting it in? A table. All right, lovely. Speak soon. Bye now. Well, might be getting somewhere finally. And on day three, that somewhere is Auto Italia's car meet near Weybridge in Surrey, where Sheldon's punter is running a stall. He's Dave Clark. I make uh, automotive furniture and uh, sculptures. So turning car seats into armchairs and sofas and bar stools from wheels and things like that. I know Sheldon's got an engine block and a set of pistons and con rods. Now I could make two tables out of that, but I would pay 500 maximum for all of that. Hey. How you doing, Dave? How you doing? Very well. How you doing, Sheldon? I'm good. What are you going to do with our engine then? First of all, um, got to take it all apart. All the pistons, the con rod and crankshafts, that's all got to come out and then split into the two tables. Two tables. See? Two See? tables. So you're going to make two tables out of this. So really, by right, if one of your tables is going for 850 pounds to maybe 900 pounds, you know, I can't give it away. How much do you want for it then? I would say at least 700 pounds. <laughs> It's got to be worth 700 pounds. No, 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 no. To no. get a 900 pounds profit out of it. There's so much work there. 350. Come on, <laughs> that's, you're insulting me. I don't want to walk this thing all the way back. It's quite heavy. Oh, exactly. But, Dave, come on. We're not even on the same page. We're in two different books. I'll stretch to 450. 550, and I'll leave it here with you, and you throw in one of those for me. 500 in one of those. Done. Deal. That's the engine block and pistons sold for £500. With a fancy paperweight thrown in as a sweetener. With one deal in the bag, Sheldon has a moment to check out the event. This is the perfect excuse to show off your new Ferrari. But if you haven't got one, you can at least try and look like you have. All right, George, what's going on? Ah, you're here just in time. George, I expect to see queues of people here with Maserati parts walking off. I've not been here five minutes. I'm unloading. Look, I'm still unloading. Come on. Give me a hand. George and Sheldon have secured a pitch at the event in the hope of selling more than just the engine parts. In fact, facing a potentially massive loss on their Maserati, they're hoping to flog the lot. Meanwhile, in Poland, Ben and Frankie's Porsche parts have arrived at one of the country's top Porsche dealerships. The job lot will be inspected by Marjek and Tomas, who don't speak a word of English. Luckily, Frankie can call on the services of a translator, who, despite his surname, doesn't speak a word of Polish. This could be good. Do we have to inspect the goods? Yeah, just let's get into it. Beautiful looking thing. To jest auto przed faceliftem czy po facelifcie? Yeah, I'll, I'll let you do your thing, yeah. Yeah. Z maski przedniej ktoś zdjął herb Porsche. He said that, that panel is fantastic. I'm glad you are along. Just thanks, because I do have to pay attention. Just, just, yeah. What are they saying? What are they saying? Really good condition, I think, yeah. He ain't said nothing. The inspection may not have been an unqualified success, but with euros being a pretty universal currency, there should be no language barrier when it comes to the deal. Well, I say that. So, uh, am I going to do this then? Well, why don't you write it down, the international language of numbers? I'm still writing in English. Yes. Well, how are they going to understand that? Numbers. Nie, nie, to nie ma sensu. Nie ma... Wracajcie panowie do Anglii, no naprawdę to za tyle nie możemy kupić. Musielibyśmy dołożyć sensu. do interesu, nie ma takiej opcji. If I said to you, you know, if I said to you that, how, how does that grab you? Nie, to jest już ciągle za dużo. Maciek, ja myślę, że możemy zapłacić im gdzieś 3700, ja im powiem 3500. Dobrze, no, tak zrobimy. E, 3500 e, euro. Yeah. Oh, he's back, oh, he's back, oh, he's back. Yeah. apparently. I know, I know the game. I know the game. Oh, I know the coup. And I've got him there. Got... Oh, no, he loves it out there. Oh, nie, nie, nie. Dobra, chłopaki, krótko. Jaka jest wasza ostateczna cena? 
That is the best I can do for you, little boys. Thank because you, you are lovely boys. Matt, stay the shelter. What's, what's his problem? OK. We'll have that. We'll take it. Can we see that, please? It's OK, OK. Lovely. Lovely. Super. Super. Super stuff. Good stuff. That one Porsche 911 body shell plus assorted parts sold for €4,000 or £3,379. Thank you very much. Ben and Frankie yeah, are guys. racing towards Thank profit and are poles apart from the opposition. Do you see what I did there? Back in Weybridge, the opposition are failing to build on the sale of their engine parts. Come and get your Maserati bits. Tail lights, headlights, anything you like. Young men, I've got something for you. Young men, hello? <laughs> Excuse me, ladies. No, 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 don't run off. Don't run off. <laughs> My Maserati's not doing well at all. It's doing very, very, very badly. I've got turbos, I've got interiors, I've got wheels. You name it, I've got it. I just need to move it. Um, desperate yeah, times call for the, desperate uh, measures. Hill will be going off in about sort of uh, 10, 15 minutes time and... Uh, Excuse me, can I borrow your mic for a minute? Yeah. Hello, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry to disturb you, but if you own a Maserati 3200, you really need to get over to our school today. It will be the best move you could make today. Thanks very much. <laughs> okay. Cheers. Thank you. And the bold move seems to have paid off. All right, mate. All right. Did. Looking for anything in particular? Just a lot of wishbones. Just a lot of wishbones? Yeah. First rule of selling, don't insult the customer. Sorry, I don't mean it would be rude, but it ain't for you or maybe for your dad. What do you mean? Have, Have you, you got, got one? Yeah. You, you've got a Maserati yeah, 3200? Yeah, it's from our car, yeah. Okay. okay, anything else you need? We've got two of those, the intercoolers. And what are you looking to spend? Probably about £75. It's a Maserati, not a Cortina. How much money have you got with you? I'll offer you £100, and that's it. That's all I've got on me today. All right, done. £100. £100, right. then, yeah? Right. All right, yeah. All right, let's see your money. £100 for the intercooler and a couple of wishbones. Normally a satisfactory outcome. But still heavily in the red, George and Sheldon need to do much, much more. Oh, here we go. Hello, mate. How you doing? OK. Looking for anything in particular? Well, I may be thinking about the radio. Dun, dun, dun. I was hoping for 80 pounds. I was sort of thinking more like 40. We can't do 40. 60 is probably the most I could justify. <laughs> Go on, 60 pounds. 60 pounds for the radio. Not really music to the ears when there's so much ground to make up. Got it for 60 pounds in the end. Uh, that's pretty good, I think, for, uh, for this. And uh, looking forward to fitting it. In one sense, it's been a fantastic day. Couldn't wish to be anywhere better. But on the other side of it, you know, I came here to make money, not on a jolly. The engine, 50 pounds shy of what I really wanted. Sold a radio cassette for 60 quid. You know, sold um, two A-arms and an intercooler for 100 pounds, which I'm not happy about. But hey, three days, backs up against the wall. Hello, How you doing, Hi. mate? Lovely set of Maserati headlights. But things oh, could be about to look up like with the arrival of Maserati <laughs> dealer Mark. And son. So you obviously know what these parts are worth? Yeah, I do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are only six of them. You tend to get a, an idea of what uh, things You've go for. six? I do, yeah. Today, I've, bought, uh, I've got my Maserati Mexico, which is... Not nice. the blue one? Yes. The metallic blue? Beautiful it's car. car. It's just in front of the hangar, yeah. isn't it? I'd like to get a picture of it. It's class. Yeah, yeah. More importantly... Yes. Yeah, right, yeah. Business. Put the subject <laughs> in hand. <laughs> yeah. What do you need from us? I'll, um... Have a little ring around, see if I can try and get more customers to spend their money. OK. <laughs> that could be the one we need, mate. Well, do you know what? That could be the one we need. It will need to be, because a meagre total of £660 of sales on the day means the boys are still facing an almighty deficit and severe embarrassment. The three days of stripping high-end motors are coming to an end. Ben and Frankie have made a tiny profit with their Porsche 911, but have nothing left to sell. At least they're not doing as badly as their opponents. George and Sheldon enjoyed a relatively trouble-free dismantle, but a string of small-time sales did little to recover the five grand debt left by the purchase of the Maserati. Three days, backs up against the wall. With the final curtain about to fall, they're still heavily in deficit and in need of a substantial sale. But there may be a silver lining for Sheldon, 
I've had a real result. The fella that I've met at Auto Italia, Mark, he's put me in contact with this guy who wants loads of bits and pieces. So what I've arranged is for my man Gordon, who does all my transportation needs, to bring as many Maserati parts down here as possible. All I know is that we're talking big money. And how much is down to Maserati dealer Gerald Ace? David Askew, Maserati Parts, breaks cars and also sells um, new parts purely for Maserati. How you doing, Mr. Oh, Ace? Sheldon. Nice Thanks to meet that. you. Thank ha you very much. You happy with everything? I'm happy. Well, I, the only thing I need to do is to sort out the best price with you. Well, you are going to get them for the best price. You know, you've bought a job lot and I will give you a good deal. I'm thinking somewhere in the region of about £4,800. Whoa. That's about one and a half too much, I'd say. If I had the time, personally, to sell all the bits, I'd make well over £4,800 on well, this one. Well, I know you haven't got time, have you? No, and you're taking advantage of that. Yeah, I think I know. am. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's going to work for both of us, hopefully. If I tell you the, the price and you see whether you like it... I have to sit down because I think you're going to hit me low. So I am going to hit you low. It's four grand. And that, matey, is it? Forty-one fifty. Four thousand pounds, Sheldon. Next time I go and buy a car, I'm going to ask you to come with me. Okay. Four thousand pounds. Yep. Okay. Shake Four thousand pounds it is. Shake hands on the deal. Pleasure doing business with you, Mr. Ace. Thank you very much. Four thousand pounds for pretty much all that's left of the Maserati. George and Sheldon have finally hit profit. But is it enough? With Sheldon's last gas method beating the final deal, it's time to weigh in any leftovers for scrap value. Both teams have managed to get shot of nearly everything on their cars, so there's not enough metal to crush. Which leaves Joe, who operates the crusher, some time to contemplate a career change dilemma. Architecture or demolition? That's enough of that. All that remains from either car is the engine cover from the Maserati. And with scrap going at £125 per tonne, a weight of nine kilos nets the boys a whopping one pound. And with that pound safely in the pocket, it's time to do some maths. Right, chaps. This should be interesting. Looks like uh, we've all been busy, haven't we? Well, some of us. It's not like you had an engine to take out, is it? Well, shall we put you ladies out of your misery? Yeah. George and I, we paid £5,000 for our Maserati. Total sales, £5,411. Which gives us a total profit of £411. George and Sheldon soon learnt that paying five grand for a scrapper puts real pressure on sales. Normally respectable sums paid for parts barely made a dent in the deficit. Whilst phone and web sales on items such as the front grille and gearbox didn't help much either. Ultimately, the Auto Italia stall did pay off, leading to a four grand bulk sale that turned their fortunes. Over to you. We parted up with six and a half grand for our lovely little German Porsche. 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 Total sales, 6,576 nicker. Right. Giving us a total wonderful profit of 76 spondulios. Buying a car without engine and gearbox is risky. Paying six and a half grand for it now looks like total lunacy. Ben and Frankie did well to make early gains from rear seats and wheels. We got a deal on what? I think we got a deal. Whilst phone and web sales on items such as suspension and rollover units added to the haul, but it was the bulk sale trip to Poland that brought in the big score. We'll have that. But it wasn't big enough. George and Sheldon are this week's thoroughbreds, but I don't think they'll be buying a yacht just yet. That is the last time I let Ben buy a motor. I mean, it's all right being a translator, but buy motors. <laughs> Do I feel guilty? No. Well, a little bit. Came really close to taking a hit on that one. <laughs> Don't want to be doing that too often. Since the making of this show, all the parts sold have found a new lease of life. 
Terry's looking for a wall space for his Maserati bonnet. Tomas and Marjek couldn't be happier with their poor shell and panels. And Mark's given his engine block not one, but two thumbs up.